Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we're talking about the Gaza flotilla and other efforts to aid people in Gaza, as well as ongoing efforts to murder every single person in Gaza. Our guest uh, returning to Talk World Radio is the wonderful Anne Wright, who is a member of the advisory board of World Beyond War, where I work. She's based in Hawaii, is often in Washington, D.C., as now. She is a retired U.S. Army Reserve Colonel, 29-year veteran of the Army and Army Reserves, was a diplomat in Nicaragua, Grenada, Somalia, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Sierra Leone, and Micronesia, and Afghanistan, and Mongolia. She received the State Department's Award for Heroism for her actions during the Civil War in Sierra Leone. And she resigned from the State Department March 19th, 2003, in opposition to the war on Iraq. She's the co-author of Dissent, Voices of Conscience, uh, and has numerous other titles and credits, including working to organize an aid flotilla to Gaza yet again. Anne Wright, welcome back to Talk World Radio. Well, thank you, David. It's great to be with you. And thanks for all you do uh, in World Beyond War and Talk World Radio. Thank you. And so what, uh, what is the status and what is the, the, the purpose and the goal of actions right now with the Gaza flotilla? Well, you know, just to give a little history of it, we've been trying to get boats into Gaza to break the illegal Israeli naval blockade of Gaza for over a decade and a half. Uh, and in fact, in 2008, five little boats were able to get into Gaza. Uh, they brought, uh, well, the wishes of the world primarily, not, not much aid or anything like that, but just people who are actually coming by sea into Gaza, which really hadn't been done for 40 years. So. Uh, after 2008, though, and the Israeli um, cast led attack on Gaza, 27 days, killed 1,400 people. Since then, all the boats that we have sailed in 2010, 2011, 2013, 15, 16, 18, and 23 have been stopped by the Israeli military. And if you remember, back in 2010, 14 years ago, the Israeli commandos uh, started shooting from a helicopter onto the top deck of the Marvi Marmara and executed 10 people on board that ship. Over 50 were wounded. I was on a ship right next to the one that was attacked uh, uh, and people were killed, but every one of the ships were, were boarded. Each one was boarded by commandos, assaulted people, passengers assaulted, beaten up, tasered, and then we were all arrested, taken against our will to Israel, kidnapped on the high seas in international waters, taken against our will to Israel, put in prison for three to five days, and then deported. And the deportation is for 10 years. So you can't go back into Israel, West Bank, East Jerusalem for 10 years. So I've done that twice. And so I have a 20-year deportation. Um, it's not that I want to go to Israel, but I would like to go to, back to the West Bank. So that's the history of it. And then now in these emergency dire genocidal conditions that we have with the Israeli military already killed, killing over 33,000 people, 70,000 wounded, 10, 7 to 10,000 people buried in the rubble. This emergency flotilla that we have uh, we have organized, we'll be going in mid-April and to challenge again the naval blockade of Gaza uh, and to bring with us a huge cargo ship that has 5,500 tons of, of uh, humanitarian assistance, medical, food, other types of things. Of course, no weapons, which uh, of course the Israelis will accuse us of having weapons and us being terrorists because we dare to challenge the criminal acts that the state of Israel and the United States are doing in the genocide of the people of Gaza. And this seems a particularly risky effort, uh, given that even the presidential friend, celebrity chef, privatized mini aid effort to replace the serious aid agency of the United Nations uh had everybody murdered by israel uh to the point where u.s media outlets 
suddenly cared about people being murdered. Uh, and here you are, peace activists who've been attacked in the past, uh, trying to bring aid into Gaza. What, what is the likelihood of, of the Israeli military attacking this flotilla? Well, you're exactly right. You've described the, the dangers that we face and the history of what uh, the Israeli military has done to uh, even, you know, the world central kitchen, the great friend of uh, the, the political elite of the United States and other countries and of Israel. Uh, uh, it is dangerous. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And we, of course, are telling our participants all of the aspects of it. And they know it because they they have been longtime supporters of trying to get Israel to stop its brutal attacks on Israel that have continued forever. I mean, it's, this one right now is the worst for sure. But, you know, there have been so many brutal attacks in 2008 and 9, in 2013, in 2014, 2018, 21. I mean, it's not like October 7th, 2023 was the first time that Israelis had brutalized thousands of people in, in Gaza. And those of us that have really been active in Palestine solidarity groups, and, and I have been to Gaza eight times starting in 2009. I went with Code Pink, uh, uh, Medea Benjamin, and Ty Berry uh, on just one day going into Gaza because we had we, we had seen the destruction on TV in 2000, January 2009 and, and saw, like, this looks like World War II. They just, they just crumbled so many buildings. So we went all the way to Cairo. We zipped across northern Sinai, barely got into to Gaza. The Egyptians said, we'll let you in, but you better get out in 24 hours because we're closing the border again. And if you if if we close it and you're inside Gaza, you'll stay until we reopen it and we don't know when. So we went in, talked to lots of people, 24 hours nonstop, taking pictures, came out. Uh, committed to bring organizations and groups into Gaza. And the next year, we took six six uh, groups, uh, usually 50 to 60 to 70 people into Gaza, so they could meet the people of Gaza, they could see the level of destruction. And then in two, late 2009, December of 2009, we organized what was called the Gaza Freedom March, where 1,350 people from, I think it was 35 or 40 countries, came all the way to Cairo, and we thought we had arranged with the Egyptian government that we could take people into, into Gaza. The people in Gaza said, fine, we'd love to have you all come visit and see what's going on. But the Egyptian government double-crossed us at the last moment, and we ended up having, uh, uh, we only got two busloads of people into Gaza. So uh, the bottom line was that we have been very, very active over, uh, you know, a decade and a half on, on Palestine solidarity issues. And then in 2010, it was the, um, the Gaza uh, flotilla that was attacked. Um, so the, yes, we, we do know the dangers. We have seen it. We've seen the history of Israeli violence toward, uh, toward Palestinians primarily, but we've seen it toward, toward internationals. And, then 2010, the, the murder of, of 10 on, on the Marvi Marmar, the wounding of 50, the world uh, central kitchen, seven. But, what, but you know, now the focus is on internationals when, geez, you know, you're, tens of thousands of Palestinians have been killed and, and Joe Biden didn't give one hoot of expression of sympathy toward the, the, the 33,000 Palestinians. I mean, this is a very racist policy that the United States has. And that's one of the reasons that we have, probably we're gonna have 45 to 50 US citizens that are going to be on this flotilla in mid-April because we are outraged about what our government's doing. And while every one of these people has been so active in, in their community and in, in, uh, marches, protests, webinars, you name it, they've done it. And then it's like, what else can we do? Because the Congress is not listening. The White House is not listening, with the exception now that the seven international aid workers were, or World Central Kitchen. So, so it's this flotilla really is an expression of 
citizen outrage towards its governments, that the governments won't do nothing. I mean, they won't, they have not tried to really stop Israel at all in any action way. And we citizens are saying, we'll get on a boat and we're going to confront this. And, and we're just fed up with the impetuousness, the purposeful a lack of doing anything to stop a genocide. So, yeah, it's dangerous, but we know we know about it. And uh, those that are on the boat are willing to confront the Israelis, even though we know that they can certainly use lethal power. They can kill us all. They can torpedo the boat. They can do a lot of different things. But we are committed to say we we stand with the people of Gaza and and our lives are worth no more than their lives are. And we are willing to confront the Israelis on it. Wonderfully, beautifully said. Uh, Anne Wright, who are a few of the people who are planning to go with you? I think Medea Benjamin from Code Pink and John Ruhr, who's our board member and treasurer at World Beyond War and, and one of our interns as well. Who, who else can you think of who's planning to go? Yeah, well, Colleen Raleigh, who is uh, yeah. you know an FBI whistleblower from the days of 9-11. Uh, we have a large number of activists that are coming from Oakland and Berkeley who have been uh, very, very active in shutting down ports and shutting down highways and all sorts of things. We have people from the Chicago area, from Florida. Uh, uh, most of the names you won't really recognize because they, they, uh, they do their work in the community level rather than on the national level. But they are all so very, very committed to to what uh, we're doing. Now, on the other hand, we have uh, 35 countries that are bringing people, and some of them have been able to convince some, some VIPs from their country, some members of the European Parliament from Spain, uh, 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 a, few, a few more high-level folks. Of course, we here in the United States, uh, no way in the world would any of our U.S. Congress people get on board this boat, although I'm sure uh, Rashida Tlaib will be there in spirit with us, but man, talk about uh, everybody hands off on in, in in the U.S. Congress on anything like this. And in fact, when we came back from an earlier, uh, uh, I think it was probably from 2010, we came back, one of the Congress people uh, said that every American that was on that boat should be put in jail. They're all terrorists. And so I got a little jail jumpsuit and went to the Congress in that jailbird outfit, knocked on the door and said, I'm here. I just like to know why I am the terrorist when you are the one that is supporting the state of Israel as it kills all of these people and kill 10 on the Marvi Mamre. You've killed thousands. Your support for Israel has killed thousands in Gaza and the West Bank. So who's the terrorist? Is it me trying to stop it or is you funding it? Well, the door slammed shut. <laughs> <laughs> on that little tirade. <laughs> well, I would take that as a compliment uh, when they slam that door on you. And I, I, I cannot picture a Congress member getting on this ship, but uh, those good people of the Bay Area getting Nancy Pelosi to say that weapons should stop going over there. I, I just was absolutely floored by that. Not a month, I think, since she was accusing anyone who said that of being in the pay of sometimes it was Russia, other times it was China. So <laughs> I don't know who <laughs> paid her off. I think she actually uh, may have listened to people for once in her life. Um, but, you know, slowly but surely. Uh, what well, we think, we, we think that, uh, uh, you know, the, you never can tell when any of these uh, uh, protests when in going to people's houses uh, bird dogging them in the congress you never know when it is uh, or if it is that that something strikes a nerve of conscience in these people and we don't know that it was the you know what what triggered nancy pelosi to do a 180 on this thing what triggered chuck schumer to do a 180 on it other than the pressure of their constituents and that both of them have had Huge, huge demonstrations uh, in their offices. They've had, they're probably their telephone lines have burned out because people are, are uh, calling them all the time and putting the, the people's pressure on them to say, you are a part of the genocide of Gaza. And if you don't change your ways, you two are going, I mean, if there is a hell, they better get an annex ready because there are sure 
for a lot of people that are going to be sitting in that thing for what they've done to allow this this genocide to continue. And you think back, you know, this week is the 30th anniversary of the genocide in Rwanda, where the world stood by and let one million Rwandans kill each other with no one stepping into it. And in in Kigali um, right now, they're having the, the commemoration of it. And guess who's sitting there? President Bill Clinton, under whose administration we did nothing. And the president of, get this one, Israel is sitting there while they commit the genocide on the people of Gaza. It is just unbelievable. And I'm, I'm shocked that the Rwandas let those two people even into their country. And no mention, I'm sure, of the U.S.-backed militarism that led up to that catastrophe or the war in Congo that followed from it uh, and killed more people than any other recent war or the brutal government uh, of Rwanda that is hosting these people. Um, you know, there's uh, there's so many awful sides to this story. Um, but I, I, I wonder what the status is in Gaza of of the need and of the supply. Uh, we've heard stories about uh, President Biden demanding that Israel allow in aid and that border with Egypt being open supposedly. Is, is aid coming in by ground? Is it going to? Are they gonna keep dropping uh, packages from the sky? And, and what percentage of the need does that, does that address? Yeah, well, those are the questions, aren't they? And we are, at the mercy of um, Al Jazeera and a few uh, a few independent groups that do a coalition of information from th from groups like Al Jazeera that are actually on, actually on the ground. Still, international journalists can only go into Gaza if they go into a company Israeli military. So, you know, things like CNN, Fox, all of these these groups, they haven't had anybody on the ground and unless they're shepherded by the Israeli military. But what, from what we hear, uh, the, the minuscule amount of aid, even though yesterday there may have been a, a hundred or 150 trucks that went in, but considering the starvation that's going on there and on, on Democracy Now!, they're showing the pictures of the skeletons of, of people that are in the final death throes. They're finally laying down. They're trying to pump some uh, saline into them. Uh, and they're skeletons. So the, the need is tremendous just tremendous and and even if the aid starts flowing immediately in the quantities that is needed which is before all of this happened it was 500 trucks a day needed to go in to for the food supply of the 2.3 million people that lived in gaza and now you know the the amount of medical supplies of supplies to keep people alive as they come out of the starvation thing because you can't just can't apparently start eating again that you have to be brought back your system can't absorb the types of food so there's different kinds of packages for to bring to starving people to get them back into some reasonable situation and i don't know the the other than they need a lot of it <laughs> and we our little cargo ship would be just a small drop in the bucket if we can get it in there but that's what we intend to do we intend to push 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 this to say when governments refuse to act and our government dropping food into into the ocean. I mean, this is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my whole life. And the 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 numbers of these food packages that have just dropped straight into the ocean and then essentially encouraging Palestinians to go out and drown themselves trying to get those packages. It just uh, it, it is just um, a brutal, nasty thing that that the U.S. government is doing, rather than saying to Israel, you open those gates and you open them right now and get that food in there. We're never, we're, we're going to cut off diplomatic, uh, uh, diplomatic ties with you. We are going to put a, a blockade, an economic blockade. I mean, there are so, there are so many things that the world could do to Israel right now that, that would get their attention. Apparently, you know, one angry phone call from Biden over the Central World Kitchen uh, broke open something, but man, there are a lot of things they could do and have to do because the Israelis are, are intent on killing as many Palestinians as possible, and particularly the young ones that will grow up to be militants after after what uh, they've seen 
if any of them survive, you can be guaranteed that they are never, ever going to think kindly of uh, the state of Israel. It seems to me that the U.S. government could simply stop providing the weapons and simply stop promoting the propaganda and simply stop vetoing the rest of the world at the United Nations. It wouldn't need to do anything good or helpful or decent. Just get the hell out of the way. Uh, and and this could be resolved uh, fairly swiftly. Well, I would go one step further. I don't think that's enough. I think for what Israel has done now, that it must suffer the consequences worldwide of this. And I think they should be diplomatically isolated and a blockade, just like was put on South Africa, put on them. I mean, they should, and every one of the senior leadership of that country should should be uh, tried as war criminals, just like every senior person, the leadership of the of the uh, Bush administration should have been put on trial for what they did in Iraq. Uh, and every one of the Biden administration for the complicity that they've had with Israel on the genocide. If all of these war criminals get away with this one more time, I mean, you'll just see another incidents like this where po elected politicians don't care. They just they're willing to sacrifice tens of thousands of people for whatever political gain that they they uh, uh, seem to think is uh, is appropriate. And this is the time to really take action to say this is we've had it. We as citizens have had enough of this crap that it's time that we put the screws to any country. Right now, it's Israel and the United States. There should be a blockade on the United States. I mean, we're complicit. We're the biggest enabler of this blockade. So I hope the world puts a blockade on us too. What about this story in President Biden's State of the Union of, of building a port to bring in aid? Oh, for God's sakes. I mean, <laughs> when I heard that, it was like, oh, for God's sakes, you know, uh, why do this? Not that, uh, I mean, the Israelis have blasted out the one port that was in Gaza City, so something needs to be repaired there, but it has not received any any ships you know, in 40 years, so to speak. So uh, this idea of building a temporary pier that you it'll take uh, 60 to 90 days, it's taking five ships from here in Virginia, uh, sailing over to the Mediterranean, and they're going to build this little portable dock. Well, I, wouldn't it be a, just a little bit easier to set, to tell Netanyahu, we're not one more bullet, not one more bomb. Uh, we're cutting off diplomatic relations and let that, that stuff get in there right now. Rather than saying, oh, yeah, we'll wait for another 60 to 90 days of the genocide to continue while we build this little dinky port and some little ships after they're inspected by the Israelis, inspected by the Israelis in Cyprus, for God's sakes, and then those ships that have been inspected now get to travel and maybe we won't shoot them. But, you know, remember the Central World Kitchen, we did shoot them. So don't be guaranteed that we aren't going to go after you. And what is the, what would the U.S. do? No, just like what it's done now. Absolutely nothing. Well, some of the same people in the United States might make money off building that pier that are making money off the bombs that the Israeli military will use to destroy that pier. Uh, well, you know. you're right. Yeah, because the contractors, I mean, it's not like U.S. military personnel are the ones that are going to actually put all this stuff together. Every one of those those ships that's bringing the stuff out, I can guarantee you, have many more contractors making probably a thousand dollars a day than the military folks on there that are probably making fifty dollars a day. So you're right. This is a big money making scam job yet one more time through the Department of Defense. And I say that with 29 years of experience. <laughs> and some and some quotation marks on defense uh and right uh where will you be sailing from to get to gaza well we're not really disclosing the actual departure point as you can imagine security on this is pretty pretty intense but we will say from the country of turkey and uh we'll we'll be putting all of this together in just a couple of weeks and we would appreciate Anyone, uh, everyone watching for the press releases that we put out will be will be getting more and more specific about exactly what's going to happen as we get closer to it. But we have had uh, Israeli operatives that have tried to um, disable ships before, and we know, you know, the propaganda and all that that the Israelis will be doing will be very intense, and it will be reflected back here in the United States as the commercial media 
the Congress and the White House will oh, no doubt just call us terrorists and sympathizers with Hamas and all of this, where, whereas we are human rights ob observers on these boats that are going to Gaza to, to witness what uh, genocide has, has occurred at the hands of the Israelis and U.S. government. It is exactly what's needed. It's it's moral and it's heroic and courageous. Uh, and I applaud everyone uh, taking part and supporting. We will put every bit of news we get from you and anyone else on the flotilla up on World Beyond Wars website uh, for sure. Uh, and right, we've got just two or three minutes left. Uh, how can people help? How can they support? What should people be doing in the United States and the rest of the world right now? Well, certainly uh, continue your work with uh, your community action groups that have been so remarkable all over the country. Things that people have done are just, you know, from blockading roads to going after ships, to going into town hall meetings, to forcing uh, ceasefire resolutions, uh, come to Congress and, and every single day, Code Pink uh, uh, has a group that helps organize anywhere from five people to 50 people that will show up. Some, some driving all the way from New York, Philadelphia, New Jersey, some flying in from one for one day from California, arriving at a, a red eye flight, working all day in the Congress and then flying home that night because this woman was so furious, so frustrated about what was going on. So being in Congress helps to get rid of a little bit of the frustration, although it can, it's so demoralizing in one way because the, 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 the majority of the people in this Congress are mean, cruel, and uh, don't care. So that's why we go after them bird dogging to get on record for the history who, who was ready to genocide a people and who wasn't. I think it's it's also useful, as you say, to work at the local level. Uh, it's easier to get your city or your town or your county or even your state to pass a resolution that then the good people who are spending the day at the U.S. Congress uh, can hold up this now pile of 100 some cities resolutions that say, listen to the people, uh, stop listening to the weapons dealers. So uh it seems that that local action can be can be useful as well, right? Absolutely, it certainly is, and that's that's where the the rubber meets the road, so to speak. And all of these PM members of Congress have to go back, or they go back to their homes over the weekend. Right. They have quite a lengthy uh, uh, time at home. They usually leave here on Thursday afternoon and don't come back till Monday afternoon. So they only work here in Congress three days, and they're back home for four days. So it gives you a great opportunity to go after them in 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 the home communities uh, where they should feel the the voting pressure on on how they uh, are are um, you know participating in this genocide. Anne Wright, I appreciate so much everything you're doing. Is there a is there a website or a way that people should uh, follow up on the story of this flotilla? Oh, yes, we have uh, usboats2gaza.org is our national campaign for the Gaza flotilla. And then we also have an international website, uh, freedomflotilla.org. And we will be posting all the information about uh, uh, the flotilla, this flotilla, and then we'll have a second one that'll leave in the summertime and take 90 days going through Europe and then finally heading down into the Mediterranean. And we want hot passengers from the U.S. on each leg of, of that journey. So that will be on both of those websites. Wonderful. Anne Wright, thank you for everything. And thanks again for coming on Talk World Radio. It's a real pleasure, David. Keep up the good work. You too. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.